All right, let's sing a song together here this morning. Um, another song, I should say. Uh, let's sing Jeremiah 33 and verse number 3. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse number 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. That's the Bible verse. Uh, but uh, we sing it a little bit different. We don't include the which thou knowest not. Uh, it doesn't quite fit into the syncopation of the song. Whether that's good or not, I don't know. But uh, let's sing that one together. Jeremiah 33, 3. If you need the words, it is there in your Bible. And uh, Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse number 3. All right, let's sing that together. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. One more time. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Good. James chapter 2 in your Bibles this morning. James chapter 2. We finally made it to the second chapter. How long have we been on chapter 1? Anybody keep notes and have it dated? August 6th? Eight months. All right, well, so it only took us two months to get through the first chapter. All right, chapter 2 of, of the book of James. Now remember, chapter 1 was largely addressing trials in our lives, right? And then God informed us how that he will form us and perfect us through our trials and, and how He works in us to bring about that spiritual perfection that often can only be achieved by the work that He does in us through His Word during our trials. But we have to be humble enough to receive with meekness the engrafted Word. And so we saw that in James chapter number 1. And then the, the chapter closes with this, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Now we get into chapter 2 and the Bible begins to describe to us some of what we just concluded with in chapter 1. My brethren... Have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons? Now, our faith begins with Jesus Christ. As a Christian, you became a Christian because you heard from the Word of God, which is described to us just a few verses prior to that, how that we are begotten by the Word of truth. We, the Word of truth showed us the, the truth of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why that was necessary for us. It was the Word of God that revealed those things to us. Without a written record of those things in the Word of God, it would just be stories passed down from generation to generation. And just like that, tame, that game of telephone that you used to play when you were younger, we know how stories change from one end of the bus to the other end of the bus before uh, 10 or, or, or 15 minutes is up. Uh, so imagine that same game being played with the traditions that are passed down by only verbal uh, transmission um, in order for us to have a sure religion, in order for us to have a sure and settled faith, we have to have a written word, a written record of the things that God needs His people to know. And so that includes the record of His Son and how Jesus Christ died to save us from our sins. Every generation will have that record preserved in God's Word so that every generation is able to know the truth of our need for a Savior. And so, the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ comes to us by the Word of God. I'll address that here in just a little bit. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and, and hearing comes by the Word of God. We hear these things by the Word of God, and then we are challenged to exercise faith in them. So, faith comes to us by hearing the Word of God. Are you with me? But then faith can also be increased by the Word of God. Anyway, verse number 1, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Now, the faith that is described here 
is the system of faith, if you will. So, in other words, don't hold the system of faith that you have been taught. In other words, the way you ought to conduct yourself as a Christian, uh, don't hold that unworthily. Make sure you understand how you ought to be living in this faith. For the just shall live by faith. You'll live in eternity. You'll have life, not death, because of your faith. But also, in this life, we live by faith as God's people. So, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ the Lord of glory, with what? With respect of persons. For if there come into your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing. Now that word gay back then meant good or happy. Um, and so you have respect to him that weareth the good or gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have what? Despise the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the Scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have what? Respect, you see it in verse number 9? But if ye have what? Respect to persons, ye commit sin. Ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the what? By the law of liberty. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would please anoint this Sunday school hour with power from on high. Help us to be taught by your word the things that we all need. I beg you, please, Lord, help your people to hear the things that are from your word through the power of your Holy Spirit. And help me to say the things that you would have me to say, but only the things that you would have me to say. I yield this time to you. I yield myself to you. I beg you, please, fill me with your spirit. We pray this as we ask it in Jesus' name. And amen. amen. Having respect of persons. Just before this, the Lord tells us, here is pure religion. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. That word visit, it does literally mean to visit. But it, it also means to help. To, to care for them. God says, look, you want to say you're spiritual? Great. Have no respect of persons and love the one with vile raiment, the one that has raiment that stinks, and the one that doesn't have the nice clothes that you have. Love the fatherless, the widows, and those that have vile raiment like you love those that have a gold ring and a nice car and a beautiful home. And God says, look, it, it should not be it should not be said of Christians that we have a difference of opinion on people because of who they are or where they come from. Amen. Have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory with respect of persons. We are reminded that this is the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are holding on to. Now, understand what I believe is being said. How did the Lord Jesus Christ treat people that were outcasts by the normal crowd? Who did He go to that nobody else would go to? He went to the lepers. Right? That nobody else would go to. He, he went to the women that nobody wanted anything to do with because of their lifestyle. Yes? Didn't He? 
Mary Magdalene had many devils. The woman at the well had many husbands. Right? And he sought those people out. You see, the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ was a faith that did not include preferential treatment. Every person in God's economy was just as important as the next person. And that is the only way to be a true religious person. We think religion is putting on a show and coming to church in our nice clothes and, and having a great performance. And, and, and a, lot of, a lot of churches put so much emphasis on great performances and great shows that the reality is they become overly formal and the average man doesn't even feel comfortable there. The church and the church service should be a place where every person from every walk of life can come without any judgment by anybody in the church. And it's not just about not having judgment. It's about us being able to love them. You see, you don't judge people that you love. It is not the faith that our Lord Jesus Christ had to have preference. It's not the faith He had. That is not the faith He handed to us. That is not what He gave us to have preference in the church. This goes beyond just people that come in with vile raiment and not the nice clothes and not the gold rings and those, thing, those types of things. It's not just about that. It's also about the fact that the church should be in unity in all things and that we should all be able to love everybody in the church without any preference for one or the other. Okay, that's about what I expected. Now, y'all, this, this doctrine is all through the Scriptures. It is all through the Scriptures. That not only did Jesus go to those that were outcasts of society and loved them greatly, but also that when there was preference that started in His own disciples. Remember where a couple of His disciples came to Him and the mother was pleading that maybe they be allowed to sit on his right hand and on his left. And then some tension arose among the disciples. Remember that? Because that's what happens when somebody starts to get preferential treatment. Well, now hold on. You're going to give them preferential treatment? Now hold on. Wait, 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 wait. That's how we would all react. So there begins to be tension even in Christ's disciples. And He expressed to them, He said, hey listen, He expressed to His own followers, the twelve that He was training specifically to do the work of the faith that He was handing them. What did He tell them? He said, the least will be the greatest, and the greatest will be the least. So don't desire the upper places and the upper rooms don't desire to be the person of attention. If you want to be the greatest in my faith, be a servant of all. Amen. Not of the people that you prefer, but of all. Yeah. There should not be anybody in any church in anywhere in the country that cannot get along with anybody else and love. Amen. Not just get along with, but love each person in the church and be able to be a servant of them. You really want to test whether or not you love somebody? Consider whether or not you could truly, I mean genuinely, genuinely serve them. Amen. So I'm being told that tonight there's food for the little get-together we're having later on. And... I wonder if everybody in our church could walk up to anybody else in our church and gladly take their plate and clean their table 
And they maybe even go get them a dessert and say, hey, you want anything else? Can I get you a little extra this or a little extra that? Hey, can I refill your cup? Mind if I... That's serving. Amen. And if we couldn't do that, then that is proof that there is an issue in our heart towards that individual. Verse number two, you see, verse number one says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. This is His faith. The one that He handed us was that of servitude and love for all people, right? That was His faith. That's the one He handed us. Now, if we, don't, if we don't live with that faith, then we don't live with our Lord's faith. Amen. We have created our own system of faith, but we have not taken His. Verse number 2, For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are you not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? I, I, want, I want everybody in this church, no matter what they wear or where they come from, and I'm not saying I always do the best at this, but I try to make and treat, make everybody feel comfortable and treat everybody the same. It doesn't matter to me where you come from. You matter to God. He, you mattered enough to Him to create you. He, he created you that way. He made you that way. Why should I not love you for the way He created you? Right. Who am I? I'm nothing but a created being of the Lord myself. I, I am what He made me. Amen. And you are what He made you. And I should be able to love you regardless of what walk of life you come from. Some of these little kids that come in on our buses and they come from some of these homes where maybe they're not taught cleanliness. And they come in and they stink a little bit and they've got food on their face from the night before and their hair hasn't been done. Woe unto the Christian that looks at a precious life and says, sit them over there, they stink a little bit. Just, you know, put all the other kids over here, but this one... Dr. Jack Kyles years ago was faced with a decision when God moved him to the church in Hammond, Indiana. And... He was there for a little while and they were running buses to pick up little kids from the different parts of the Chicagoland area. And he had, I think, if I remember right, might have been the mayor of the town, a banker or two, some people that were very wealthy in his church at the time. And after he had been there for a, uh, a couple few months, they came to him and said, Pastor Hiles, we're glad that you're here. We've been enjoying the preaching and the things that God has done through you here, but we just want to say that we're not so sure about you bringing in these bus kids. We're not sure if we want our walls all scratched up and our bathrooms dirtied up, and we're not sure if we want our pews stinking, and we're not sure whether or not we want those types of things in our beautiful facility. So if you're going to keep going after the bus kids, then we're going to leave the church. But if you want to keep us and the finances that we bring here, then we're asking you to stop the bus ministry. He said as a young preacher, that was quite a hard thing to hear course you know you need people to help pay the bills for the ministry and when you've got people that have great influence in the community it's great to have them in your church they can help in so many different ways he said but I thought and prayed and thought and prayed and thought and prayed 
And I don't remember the whole story, but if I remember right, he said he was walking down the streets of Chicago. I don't know what he was doing, if he was praying or if he was running an errand or what it was, but he said, after I had thought and prayed for some time, he said, it was, it was like the Lord reminded me that he was the one that builds the church and he was the one that would take care of the church. Amen. And he said, my heart was always with those that were less fortunate and he said, I was walking down that Chicago street and I said, right there in the middle of my walk, I'll take the bus kids. I'll take the bus kids. All of the rich men left and God took a ministry from something that was just getting by to at one point the greatest and biggest independent Baptist church in America. The heart of every Christian should be. Amen. I have no preference. Every person in this room means as much to me as the next person. Now, obviously, we all have friends and we're, we're drawn to certain personalities. There's nothing wrong with friendship. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. It's not what the Bible is saying. But there should be a love in the heart of every Christian that supersedes any preference of any nature that no matter who it is, or where they come from, or what has happened, we can genuinely look them in the face and say, I love them as much as everybody else in this room. Amen. Is that where we are? Is that our heart? Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would please take this Sunday school time and impress upon our hearts the things that we need. I pray that you'd help us to love one another as we should. And for there to be no respect of persons in us, no opinion that somebody is better than the other. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to, to love each other as Christ loves all of us. We pray this as we ask it in Jesus' name and amen.